Hello, people. Oh, guess what? I uh, came up with an intro for this podcast, so let's pretend this is the beginning. Ready? <clears throat> Welcome to Stan Twitter in podcast form. The Biased Critic, starring Cat, or your host. I don't know. One of the two. I like it, though. Stan Twitter in podcast form. I think that's pretty funny. Anyways, hi, welcome to The Biased Critic. I'm Kat. Um, if this is your first time joining us, um, this is going to be a disappointing episode. I'm eating a cookie. This is going to be a disappointing episode if this is your first episode. Um, anyways. So, last week I didn't do any podcast. I didn't post anything. Um, because I just wanted a break, and, um, I did some other things. I finally felt, like, confident enough with myself to, like, clean my apartment. So I did that, and just chilled out, watched TV, you know, just did some stuff, just took a break. I I needed a break from worrying about, okay, I have to make time to record, because I have to set, you know, half an hour to, like, 45 minutes or so to record, and then, you know, another, that amount of time to listen to it, plus another set amount of time to edit it if needed, which I do very minimal editing. I'm sure people have noticed that by now, but I just, the mental, like, the thought of it at that point like to take at least two hours to two and a half hours out of my day to do that just was like not doing it for me so I just was like you know what I'm gonna just take a break do some other things that I need to get done and I feel a lot better so there's that so that's why I took a break um so the funny story is is I actually recorded this episode last Last night, um, on, on Thursday, I'm recording this on Friday now, um, reason is, there was a few things that I talked about that I didn't really have as much to say as I thought I did, which I will get to, obviously, at some point, so it was like kind of a short episode, and I didn't really have, like I said, I didn't really have as much to say on things as I thought I did, so I was just kind of blah, but today I have more to talk about, so let's jump right in. Um, first thing I want to talk about is the new 21 Pilots song called Shy Away, um, which I like the song. I would like, I want to, like, listen to it and, like, a little bit more, because I've only listened to it a couple times to, like, really understand the lyrics, but I like the song, I like the electronic sound to it, it's, sim. I feel like it's very much a 21 Pilots song, um, I don't think it's very different for them, like, the sound of it, but I liked it. It's it's up tempo. I really liked that Tyler did some screaming in this song. I feel like we didn't get a lot of that last album. In the last album, didn't get a lot of screaming. Um. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was fun. I would like to. I'm gonna listen to it a little bit more and kind of do a little bit more. Uh, in depth searching about the lyrics, but um. I wasn't a huge fan of the music video, um, just because, like, I like a lot of their music videos, but, like, the ones where they're just straight up just performing, they're, like, fine, but they're not that interesting to me, um, and that might just be because I don't really know a whole lot of, like, the lore that is, uh, behind 21 Pilots, um, So, I started listening to 21 Pilots around the time Blurry Face came out. So, I kind of know about the Blurry Face character, but 
I wasn't really as in to like that like the whole lore and the like the storyline of Twenty One Pilots like some fans are, which is, you know, fine. Uh, I just I didn't was wasn't what I cared uh, about as much. So maybe someday I'll look do some more digging and reading about the lore and the characters like Dima and Clancy. Like I have no no knowledge on what those characters are or like the meaning behind those characters. But um, maybe one day I will do some more research on that. Um. But yeah, I like the song. It's definitely... I wouldn't say it's different. I think the it's more up-tempo, which is a little bit different. And I feel like the lyrics are, are a little different. Um, but I liked it. It was, it was fun. Definitely a, like a summer song. I feel like it could be a, a summer song for sure. Um... I feel like, as a, like, a fandom and, like, stuff, um, what was the song that they put out called? Shit. Now I can't remember what the heck it was called. Hang on. The one that goes, um, you could be my little quarantine or whatever. What the, what the heck is that song called? I can't remember. Level of Concern. I really liked Level of Concern. And I feel like it didn't get, um, a good, um, like, a lot of, uh, I don't know, attention. I feel like it didn't get a lot of attention. Um, but I really liked Level of Concern. And I feel like it sounds kind of, I feel like Shy Away kind of sounds like a more up-tempo, like, music sound, you know? I don't know. I th- I hope that, I do hope that this al- album, um, Scaled and Icy, I, th- I hope that sounds, I hope as an album it sounds more like Level of Concern, but I wouldn't, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what it sounds like. I'm excited for the new album for sure. Um, yeah. Um, in other news, um, so Pete Wentz uh, has a Apple podcast, or not, I keep wanting to say Apple podcast, Apple music radio show called Loud and Sad with um, a friend called Elliot who was the photographer for the Mania Tour. Um, I did not know that he was British, so that was fun. I just listened to both episodes today, um, which is, like, the main reason I wanted to re-record this episode is because I hadn't listened to either episodes of Pete's show yet, and I started talking about it, and then I was just like, but I haven't listened to it yet, so there's not, I don't really have anything to say on it, so... That's why I wanted to re-record it. It's because now I've listened to both episodes. Um, it is so exciting, first of all, to get so much Fall Out Boy content um, through this media, like this platform. Because now Pete's got his own show. Joe has his podcast. Um, and Patrick does the theme songs for Joe's podcast. Which, by the way... If you, if anybody else is also regularly listening to Joe's podcast, which it, you should, it's like, it's interesting, it's a mental health podcast, I talked about it a couple episodes ago, um, it's really interesting to like, hear him interview people, um, and talk about mental health, and interview just different types of people, and talk about his, but he also is, like, talking about his day-to-day life, uh, in the last episode that, um, aired this week on Tuesday, um, he got a vasectomy, (laughs) so it's like, you get a, oops, I forgot to turn my phone off, sorry, you get an, like, this whole new intimate look into Joe's life that, 
frankly, we've probably never really gotten outside of, like, the occasional social media post. Like, Joe is not, he doesn't post very much on social media, but, like, in the 20 years that Fall Out Boy has been a band, Joe hardly ever gets interviewed, and, like, there are a select few interviews that there are really good, like, Joe moments. Um, so it's, like, really, it's really nice to get this whole new, uh, this whole new insight on, on Joe and who he is as a person, and, um, he's, like, I mean, we already knew he was a really funny guy, and he cracks a ton of jokes, which, so it makes it for a easy listen when it's such, like, uh, when I first, when the last time I talked about Joe's podcast, um, like I said, it was a couple episodes ago now, um, and I kind of mentioned that it's, like, really heavy subjects that are talked about, um, when I talked about it, but, like, now that he's kind of gotten into, like, his own groove of making this podcast, like, it's so funny, and it makes it for such a easy listen, and, like, they're not just strictly talking about, um, like, depression or whatever, um, like, they are talking about, like, the, like, whoever they're interviewing, like, they talk about their career, and, you know, he meant, he talks about, you know, he tells fallout boy stories and other stories about, you know, just his life or whatever, um, and it makes it for, like, a much easier listen, and it's so fun to get this, con like, this amount of content in just this completely new form, like, there's, there's never been, um, I mean, we get, we got interviews from fallout boy, of course, but we've never, I mean, we don't get, to, um, this form of media from them and so it's really nice that this is what they are doing um and like I said Patrick does the theme song for Joe's podcast and what's funny is, is he it's like the intro theme um is changed every week and um the best one was last this this past episode he says um, how did it go? Something about, uh, one time I got a boner while I was getting a massage and I was so embarrassed I never got a massage again. Um, so, there's a lot of dick jokes, of course, because, well, why wouldn't there be? Um, but yeah. So, I really love, I really love the, the podcast. But, anyway, Pete's radio show um, it's like a, like a standard radio show, um, you know, tells stories in the middle of playing music. Um, Pete definitely knows his audience. Um, he's the one radio show host who can get away with playing his own music. Because the first episode he played Thanks for the Memories, and then the second episode, um, he played Sugar, We're Going Down. Um, which he talked about, um, Thanks for the Memories. It was produced by R&B singer Babyface because apparently uh, Pete and Patrick went to the movie uh, Josie and the Pussycats and Pete was fascinated by the soundtrack because he's Pete and um, was like, he said in the show, he said that... Um, he wanted to know who made the mu the soundtrack for that that movie because it sounded like someone was trying to make a punk soundtrack without ever hearing punk music, and it was Babyface. So then Babyface produced Things from the Memories, um, and yada yada yada. But uh, Pete definitely knows his audience because, like I said, he's the only radio show host who can probably get away with playing his own music or his own band um and then he's also played like Paramore Linkin Park um trying to think like he's played music that's like within that genre that's 
Paul Rowe Boy is usually associated with. And then he's played, like, Kid Cudi and Kanye West, which, uh, I mean, as a Swifty, I despise Kanye West, but that's beside the point. I just skipped that bit. Um, what else? He played The Weeknd, and then, of course, he has to play um, a ton of movie soundtracks because, again, he's Pete Wentz. Um, which is his thing. Um, he played, like, the Footloose theme, tr- uh, like, song. And what else did he... He pulled from a ton of movies. Um, and, of course, he talks about Terminator 2 in the second episode, which is, like, a Pete Wentz thing to talk about Terminator 2. Um, that's, like, he... It's, like, the you know how you know about something, but then it you kind of stop paying, like, hearing about it or whatever, so then you kind of forget it. So, like, me knowing, like, having, like, dedicated my life to Fall Out Boy and knowing about, uh, so much about them for my entire teenage, uh, existence, um, of course I knew about Pete's obsession with Terminator 2, but seeing how it has, there hasn't been a lot of Fall Out Boy content, period, within the last couple of years, let alone Pete talking about Terminator 2, it's not something that, you know, if I thought of Pete Wentz, it's not, I wouldn't associate him with Terminator 2 within the last couple of years, but then when I was listening to this episode about him talking about Terminator 2, and I just got so kind of nostalgic in a way, I guess, like just got... It took me back to, like, being a teenager and watching Fall Out Boy interviews and just him talking about Terminator 2. But that's stupid. But, yeah. So, he definitely knows his audience because, like I said, he's playing a lot of alt-pop and then 80s pop. Um, And then he played, like, Metallica, Guns N' Roses, just stuff that you know that he is a big fan of. So, he definitely knows his audience, which is awesome. And he also tells a lot of Fall Out Boy stories, which is great. Like, how he and Patrick went to see that Josie and the Pussycats movie. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to hear more of that. I hope it continues. And I definitely got an Apple Music subscription just so I, I could listen to... Pete's radio show, so if you weren't convinced I haven't sold my soul to Fall Out Boy, maybe that will sway you in that direction a little bit more. Um, anyways, in other news, Taylor Swift was on the Stephen Colbert show, um, this was a little while ago now, I don't remember what day it was, I think it was last Friday, I think it was a week ago, so a little over a week ago when this podcast comes out, but... She was on the Stephen Colbert show, um, talking about, well, supposed to be talking about, uh, re-recorded Fearless, and, um, this is the other reason that I decided to re-record this episode, is because, um, I was actually listening to a Taylor Swift podcast called 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast, um, if you've not heard of it or listened to it, you should go check it out, it's, uh, it's short episodes, and there's not a whole lot of episodes out right now, but it's a lot of fun, and the hosts are really great, so if you are a big Swifty like myself, um, and you don't have anyone else to talk about her with, go listen to 13, a Taylor Swift fo- uh, fan podcast for sure, um, and also keep listening to mine, please, but... um so I was list- they did an emergency episode when this interview came out, and um, so at first I was kind of disappointed with this interview. I mean, obviously it was a bit, um, and it was just a way for her to drop a bunch of Easter eggs, but there was one thing that they mentioned uh, about this uh, interview that kind of s- made me change my mind on how I felt about this interview because like it was 
it was really campy and cheesy, of course, and the whole thing was, um, is the song Hey Stephen written about Stephen Colbert? He was convinced that this, he was, joke like, in the bit, he's convinced that Hey Stephen was written about him, and Taylor, of course, being Taylor, drops a bunch of Easter eggs that are hinting towards 1989 being the next, um, album to be re-recorded and released. Um, so, she dropped, she munches a bunch of numbers, and then there's, like, the mood board that make, and there's just a whole bunch of hints that make, that le- have led us to believe that 1989 is the next album to be re-recorded and released. Um, which would make sense because um, there was the Wildest Dreams, Taylor's version snippet in that movie trailer for a movie called Spirit Untamed or something like that. It's a cartoon movie about talking horses, I think. Um, so yeah, the Wildest Dreams, Taylor's ver- version was in that movie trailer. So, that was, like, the first clue. So, now people are just trying to figure out when she's going to either announce it or um, release it or whatever. But, um, yeah, sometime, I think I think the general consensus is that sometime in May she's going to announce it. And then perhaps sometime in June is when it will be released. Um, so, yeah, we'll find out. I think people were kind of ex- kind of wondering if she was going to dr- like um announce something this weekend, but I mean it's it's all possible, but who knows. I don't I don't foresee that happening yet. But we shall see. But um the reason so I was kind of disappointed with this interview just because I mean there wasn't a whole lot of interviewing it was just the the bit and about hey Stephen being about Stephen Colbert and then Taylor's like no it's about Stephen King and it's like well that's a weird pull like that's a weird person to reference like and then they but in this podcast they were saying like there's some different Stephen King references that she makes that add up to to 13 or 1989 like a book that she referenced came out in 1989 and then it has so many pages and so like it has 800 and something pages in this book and 8 plus whatever plus whatever equals 13 the amount of pages in the book um so that was an interesting easter egg that I hadn't seen and then the other one, which is the one that kind of changed my mind about this whole interview, was that, um, so some, but one of the hosts of this podcast says, so she's acting like a crazy obsessed fan over Stephen Colbert because she talks about knowing him, where his office was and how old he was and his birthday and his social security number and she's acting all crazy like she does in the Blank Space music video. And I was like, oh my god, why have I not seen that all over the internet? Oh, about, like, come on, that's, that's so genius. She's acting like crazy obsessed stalker fan, and that's how, she, that's the character of the Blank Space music video, is like this crazy obsessed girlfriend. Genius genius completely just blew my mind completely changed my mind about the whole thing so yeah i am looking forward to the 1989 re-release when it does happen though because it's not my favorite taylor album um which is unfortunate because that's the only tour of Taylor's that I've been to is the 1989 one, um, when I saw her live, and, um, at the time, I like, I loved that album, like, I thought it was a really good album, but she's just put out better albums 
since then. And so it's just kind of slowly made its way down the ranks, or my ranks at least. Um, so maybe one day I'll do an episode ra- ranking all of Taylor's albums and why. I don't think people would be very pleased with me if I did that, though, but I might. Anyways, well, you know, I didn't make this a whole lot longer than I thought I was going. I thought I was going to have a longer episode, because, what? When I first recorded this episode, it was only about 30 minutes, but... Now that I had more things to say, I thought I was going to take a little bit longer, but I guess I had more interesting stories than I did before, so. Anyways, um, I think I'm just going to cut it a bit short, but I guess I will tell my one story that I did tell, um, because it is funny to me. It probably isn't funny to anyone else, but it is funny to me, um, so... Um, the company that I work for is a brand new business uh, in my town. Um, we just opened um, in March, and um, I got hired there in like fall of 2020. So I was training at another location, and then I was like helping with like setting up the actual building and everything and so I was the first outside of like the management team I was the first person hired within this company and then as time went on of course we hired more people and we built up a team and yada 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 um so the reason I'm telling the story is because a common thing within music communities and fans is gatekeepers and I've never really understood why people feel the need like why people feel like just because they've been a fan for longer than other people that that means they're more deserving or you know that they've been to more shows that means they're a more deserving fan like first of all what are you more deserving of I do not know um or that you're a better fan because you've been a fan for longer or you know you have spent more money on merch or something. I don't know. It, it, everybody's different when it comes to their gatekeeping styles. Um, but the reason I bring this up is because I've never really understood why that's a thing um, until I started working with this company and um, having been the first person hired within this company because now, so like I said, we opened in March and there were a like the first week of March we opened and there was a couple people that got hired that first week like the few days leading up and the few days after there was a few people that got hired um, the few days before opening and a few days after I'm going to sneeze, hang on maybe not Um, and so now I I don't have any problems with any of my coworkers by any means but I definitely feel feel superior to them simply because I've been there the longest and I know that that's stupid and I know that that is um petty but I definitely feel superior just a just a little bit like we all got little pins and little shirts that say opening team um or something along those lines when we opened and I just in my my the bottom of my heart I just I really did not feel like those few people deserved the shirt that said opening team because they didn't go through what I went through. So yeah, I had, I kind of I can relate to gatekeepers um of music communities although I do not agree with them and I do not um associate with them. However, I will continue to to gatekeep my job because I feel superior to those who are new um so yeah anyways that's about all i've got for you this week uh hopefully i'll have a little bit better episode next week but i just thought since there was a lot of just little news to cover um within different fandoms that i would just 
do that this week and then I hope to potentially have a guest on next week. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to try to make it happen eventually because I have a specific person that I have that I want to come and talk about a specific thing with me. And I, it has to be that person and it has to be that thing because it's, it, it's related. And um, once it happens, it'll make sense. I don't want to spoil it though. Um, so hopefully I can get them next to come join me next week, but look out for that in the future. Um, for sure it will happen. Um, and if you guys have any like ideas on things I should talk about, if you are like wanting to hear me talk about something, you know, whether that be like um, like I said, ranking Taylor Swift albums, or maybe ranking, I don't know, other albums, like Fall Out Boy or something, um, or, I have a lot of ideas in mind, but, uh, if you have any, like, things that you think I should talk about, definitely, you can tweet me, or comment on my Instagram, I still can't get into my Twitter, or not Twitter, my TikTok, but, um, the social links to both the podcast and my own personal socials are always in the just pod descriptions on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you pod. Um, but just in case, um, on Twitter and it is at the bias, or no, on Twitter it's at critic biased, and then on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, it is at the bias critic. Um, and I think that's going to be it for us this week. I hope you t- tune in again next week. And um, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your week. And uh, yeah, bye.